Hey guys, I'm going to start this out. This is a Cancer Basics video, and this Cancer Basics, it is a basics video, but it is specifically meant for complex students in their last semester of nursing school. So if you are in your adult semester and you're watching this thinking, hey, this is a basic video, it's a little too uh, in-depth, even though it's basic, <laughs> um, you know, it's too in-depth for what you need to know. Um, you're welcome to watch it, but I don't want you to get too overwhelmed by the material that's in this video. So this is really meant for last semester students that are going over cancer more in-depth. So it's the basics of the in-depth version of your cancer. <laughs> So what is cancer? So cancer is an abnormal and uncontrolled growth of cells. So in other words, you know, it's um, what happens is, is that there's these cells that, um, you know, in your body that were once normal that start to mutate and they become abnormal. And, you know, everyone asks, well, what's the problem? You know, you just got some extra cells, but they start to invade, take over, they take up space. Um, and they make it where your normal functioning cells, um, there's not as many of them. So um, like organ function and stuff can decline. And then it can actually start to decrease function by putting pressure and other things on areas that really can't afford to have pressure in certain areas. So, um, you know, there's three stages of cancer. There's what's called the initiation stage, which is where the mutation in the gene starts, where normal cells become abnormal. There's the promotion stage, um, which is a growth stage. And this is reversible stage. And that's where fuel gets added to the fire. So things like obesity, alcohol, smoking, and other factors like that um, kind of start that proliferation or promoting process. So kind of think of like, you know, uh, like grow, uh, your cancer is starting to get things that support it to grow. Um, and then there's the progression stage, which is the spreading stage where actual invasion starts to happen. So there's, uh, you know, multiple things that can cause cancer. These are just a few. There's chemicals, radiation, and viruses. Um, you know, a lot of times um, we talk about at my job um, that there's the uh, those purple top wipes at my job, and we call them the cancer wipes because they have chemicals in them that can lead to cancer. So, um, you know, a lot of really caustic stuff. So things that you would think would be very damaging, um, but that's what can lead to some of those gene mutations that gets that process started. Um, cancer is very tricky. It flies under the radar of your immune system. So even though it's not normal cells, you're, they, they appear to be normal because cancer has a lot of ways to um, trick your immune system. So, um, you know, that's why a lot of times, even though this is an abnormal process, process, your body doesn't know it. Um, and it, like I said here, it's not detected as not yours. It still thinks your body thinks, oh, this is me. Um, you know, this looks enough like me to think that it's still me, even though it is an abnormal cell. And the two, you know, um, terminology for the different types of, um, what do you call them, um, tumors or cell growth that you might find, one's called benign, um, that's well differentiated. So think of this like the home body, um, what do you call them? Um, uh, effectively, um, it's very well differentiated cells, even though there is an overgrowth of cell, they're not trying to invade anywhere. They just want to stay where they're at and kind of keep their own little nest egg. So there's some, you know, so maybe a collection of cells, they're not really hurting anything, it can be easily removed. Um, you know, they're, uh, you know, they're not um, causing any problems in the area, aside from maybe that they're, you know, taking up some space, but it can be e easily removed. Then there's malignant cells. Those are the invaders. These are the social butterflies. Um, you know, so uh, like I have home body versus social because benign tumors, you know, they really just hang out and want to stay where they're at, where malignant tumors, they want to spread and be social and go to other organs, go on lymph nodes and travel other places. These are not well differentiated. Um, and so, um, uh, what do you call them? It's a lot harder to treat them and it's a lot harder to remove them because of the way that the cells look. Um, so in other words, like, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen like on a, um, uh, like on a TV show or something, or maybe in your own life where they say like, hey, you know, we got good margins or, you know, things like that um, when it comes to removing tumors and cancer. But, you know, this is kind of what this is talking about. If you have cells that it's really easy to tell what are the cancer cells and what are not the cancer cells, it's easy to, um, you know, kind of cut out, hey, here's the abnormal cells. Um, but if there's a lot of, um, they're not well differentiated and they're kind of very scattered or hard to tell um, what's cancer and what's not, you have to be careful and leave some of that good tissue and sometimes you can leave some of the cancer there so that's why benign is a lot easier and you can also it, it all has to do with what you can see under the microscope I probably should have put a picture on here but I don't want to get y'all nerding out on that stuff because you probably you're not going to be shown a picture of cells on your test and have to see is this well differentiated or not but just realize that benign it hangs in one place it's easier to remove um, the cells uh, we call them they're not harmful or spreading um, whereas malignant and invades it's a so, a so 
social, um, you know, type of cancer. It's going everywhere, trying to spread, and it's harder to treat. So there's a couple of different ways that we can stage cancer. Um, first, we can do what's called clinical staging, and that has four, st five stages, excuse me, um, you know, officially, because there's stage zero, um, which is um, what you call um, a non-invasive, kind of like a benign tumor or something like that, you know, cancer in situ is what it's called. Um, and so it's not going to be invading or going anywhere. Um, stage one is like a local cancer, but it does have that invasive quality. So it has the potential to spread, but it's still just in one area. Stage two is a limited local spread. So maybe in your breast, it's spread um, just uh, locally, like to like, um, you know, nearby in your breast, still in the same region. Um, and then um, stage three is going to be an extensive local regional spread. So maybe it's starting to spread to some lymph nodes um, or spread to, um, you know, uh, like accumulating more in an area. And stage four is metastasis, which means it's gone to multiple organs. Um, then there's also what's called the TNM, uh, what do you call it, staging system. And that's um, T stands for tumor. So they, they have a grading scale where they measure how, what's the tumor size and what's the invasiveness of that tumor. Um, the N is for has it spread to the lymph nodes and the M is for metastasis, has it spread to other areas. So these are two different ways and it's really just doctor preference, but effectively it's either looking at, you know, um, clinical staging, which kind of looks more at where is it, where the TNM is a little bit more detailed and it talks more about the size, um, where it's gone and if it's invasive or not. So it kind of combines a few other factors for that. So what are some uh, the most common signs of cancer? And so they use that acronym CAUTION. And so what that stands for is for C, change in bowel or bladder habits, a sore that does not heal, unusual bleeding or discharge, a thickening or lump in the breast or elsewhere, indigestion or difficulty swallowing, an obvious change in a wart or a mole, or a nagging cough or hoarseness. And obviously these are very um, general symptoms, but they're definitely ones that usually we want to investigate and can suspect that there may be some sort of cancerous process going on. So especially depending on their history and stuff like that, um, these are the ones that we would want to investigate. So how do we diagnose cancer? So we diagnose cancer by looking for abnormal growth um, or cancer cells um, present. So we usually, um, you know, wherever we're suspecting there might be cancer, whether there is a growth or um, whatever we might find, we're gonna do what's called a biopsy. We can do one in the tissue, we can do one on the bone marrow. We can also do what's called cytology where we're really looking deep in those cells to see what they look like. Kind of like we were talking about that differentiation of the cells. Um, we can also look for tumors on a chest x-ray, ultrasound, a CAT scan, um, or a PET scan. Um, and um, uh, we cut a, that's gonna let us to actually visualize like if we can actually see the physical tumor. Uh, we can also look for abnormal function of the organs. So maybe like, you know, if there is a tumor in one of these places, we would actually see a decrease or change in function of those organs. So liver function or kidney function testing as examples. Um, and then we can also maybe do some labs to look for tumor or genetic markers. So like there's the BRCA gene um, for breast cancer. There's, um, there's a couple for a couple different cancers, which we'll talk about in those individual cancer videos. Um, but um, as a whole, those are some basics that we can look at. So what are my overall goals for a client with cancer? I'm hoping to, uh, you know, of course, my, my biggest goal would be to cure the cancer, not me as the nurse, but, you know, I'd hope that we could maybe um, progress to that, have no more cancer and be what's called, it'd be in uh, what's called remission. It doesn't mean the cancer can't come back, but currently, um, you know, we want to get to the patient to being cancer free. If I cannot cure it, then I want to control it. So in other words, I want there to be no more growth, keep it small and keep it contained, like not spreading. And if I cannot cure and I can't control it, then I want to at least provide palliative care. And keep in mind, really, no matter if my goal is cure, control, um, either one of those, I can also ha always have palliative care. It's not that palliative care is the last option. And most people don't really understand what palliative care is, but it's really just, um, you know, symptom management. And so if I'm a patient that has cancer, I have a lot of different symptoms, or that's on a different PowerPoint. <laughs> so there's, you know, there's nausea, vomiting, hair loss, emotional, psychosocial needs 
needs, um, nutritional needs, uh, maybe like musculoskeletal fatigue, weakness, like a lot of stuff. And so what a palliative care team comes in and does is regardless of where you're at, it's not just end of life. Um, no matter where you're at, even if you're just starting cancer treatment, they make sure all of your needs are met and that you have um, your goals for like what you consider to be good life and um, what you need to feel better are going to be met. So not to looking more from a holistic picture. Um, and it really helps to have that on board. So if you're working in a hospital that has a palliative care team and you have a patient, no matter if it's cancer or not, anyone who has a really complicated case um, or maybe has a lot of symptoms or maybe doctors aren't agreeing on what their care um, should be, a palliative care team consult can be really helpful. So how can we prevent cancer? Uh, we want to limit alcohol use, uh, have regular exercise. We can manage the, our weight, regular physicals and screenings, avoiding cigarettes and tobacco use. Um, knowing your family history is important because family history plays a big role in cancer. Um, getting at least six to eight hours of sleep a night, which I know seems impossible in nursing school, um, using a sunscreen, avoiding a tanning, uh, tanning bed, um, decreasing stress, and having a balanced diet. Um, all these things, like they may seem like common sense, but um, if right now, check down the boxes and see how many of those that you meet. And so a lot of times, um, it's really hard to um, balance all of these things together. So yeah, so that's the beginning introduction. Oh going backwards, um, beginning introduction to what cancer is um, to kind of get you started, but there'll be more to come. Have a good day.